Hello, welcome to another great word in the street. So excited today for a return guest. Cher Butler of I Will Not Keep Silent Ministries. How you doing, Cher? Great, how are you? I'm doing great. You know, the first time you came on, people loved it. You know, not just because you you had this angelic, <laughs> but the strength that you have, Cher, the way that you minister uh, to people, not just women. And, you know, God has really put some incredible gifts in you, a prophetic gift. Folks, if you don't think uh, the gift of prophecy is alive and well, uh, you haven't been looking around. You know, we are living in the days uh, that we read about, and it is time, like none other, that people are able to authentically operate uh, in the spirit and in the natural and share. Uh, it, she's the real deal. She's tried and true. And I, again, just proud to call you a friend, you and your hubby, Ryan, who I can't wait to interview him as well. Incredible interview. But Cher, since, since you've been on Word on the Street, tell us what all has happened with I Will Not Keep Silent. Silent. So we have seen an increase in miracles. Um, we've always seen a lot of deliverance, but we've seen um, an increase in the need for deliverance, believe it or not. But God is on the move. We have seen sicknesses healed, uh, COVID, flus, things like that, uh, and, and other issues, uh, tumors disappear. Um, so we've seen an increase in healing miracles, but also in the deliverance sector, but wow. we know that deliverance ministry is often under the healing ministry. And well. you know, before we go into that, I'm excited that we are. Uh, you know, uh, who was it said to me the other day that people tend to think about the deliverance ministry as people, <laughs> yeah, let's break out the rattlesnakes, you know, and, and it's not necessarily uh, 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 as off base as some people make it out to be. You know, people tend to criticize what they don't understand, but there really is a battle between good and evil. The Satanists know that. Evil knows that. Evil is united. They know that. But for some reason, uh, uh, we've had to do some catching up uh, in, in, in the bride of Christ, the body of Christ, but, but we are catching up nonetheless. And before we go into that with deliverance, tell us about maybe some specifics, if you can, about some of these miracles, because Jenna Taylor, Jenna Raleigh Taylor of, of You Need a Miracle, every week she sees a miraculous thing happen at the, at the homeless shelter at Faith City Mission in Amarillo, Texas, uh, and in her own life. People, God is moving. Jesus is appearing to people around the earth. We know this. And miracles still happen, and they really are uh, taking place right here in West Texas as well. So give us a snapshot of, of uh, some of those miracles, Share if you would. Yes, so uh, like you said, miracles are reality. So that's what I believe. So that's the new normal that we're going to see. It's not the things that we're hearing in um, secular news, but the new normal is miracles in the book of Acts church rising again. So um, really, to, you know, we've seen just so many uh, like tumors disappearing and, um, and, and illnesses healed. And also one of the greatest miracles that we overlook is miracle of inner healing. So that would deal with um, emotional trauma or a mental illness. Like wow. a lot of people will talk about like bipolar disorder or anxiety or depressive disorder and think that they just have to live with that whenever um, the word says that Jesus came to give us life abundantly. So part of that is healing of um, our emotions, of our mind, of our will. So those are, I mean, those are some of the greatest miracles we've been seeing to where people are able to get off uh, medications where people don't need those things anymore. And um, we've had confirmed miracles by doctors saying, you know, particularly that lady with the tumor. She also went in to have the tumor taken out, but it wasn't there, but she had a bladder issue wow. that she had from birth that was also gone. So that's just a little snapshot. And I'm talking about the past couple of weeks. Really? This, and it's just been, I've seen an increase. And the key is faith. It's believing God's word, yeah. um, knowing God and acting on it. And so I think we've made things complicated that really... God made simple in the scripture. If we'll just believe what his word says and we'll act on it, he will show up. He will show up. And, and you know, so many times uh, uh, people are very, very quick to get on a prescription. They're very quick uh, to medicate the symptom mm -hmm. and not really deal with the root cause of the problem. Right. You know, e even uh, doctors that have no religious affiliation or uh, no connection to the faith community, uh, they will tell you, look, you know, 
A lot of these, these issues here stem from abandonment. A lot of these issues over here uh, stem from trauma. They'll even tell you that many times unforgiveness uh, will literally make you sick because you resubject your body to a trauma over and over again when you repeat the matter. And your subconscious does not know the difference between the first time you experience that trauma and the time you keep reliving it, rehashing it, you know, uh, repeating it. But with deliverance, you're dealing with the root cause right. of issues. And there are, there are some miraculous things, some downright scary things at times. But if, 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 if Jesus is a reality to you, if spiritual warfare is a reality to you, then why, why wouldn't you be, uh, uh, why would you be shocked and why wouldn't you be uh, affirmed in your faith that, that the captives are still being set free? You know, his agenda never went away. Uh, the command to take dominion never went away, but the agenda to, to set loose, you know, from chains, those who are in darkness, you know, to, to uh, bind the brokenhearted. And that's a big part of deliverance. I mean, if, if you get away from what people tend to paint it as, and like you say, it, it's true, it's real, then not only is it really supernatural, it's supernaturally real. Right. And so getting to a root cause of a situation, what does that look like? Uh, if someone says, hey, I've tried everything. I've tried medication. I've tried addiction. I've tried everything. And nothing can make the pain go away. Uh, what's the process of someone that is seeking deliverance in their life? So the process is, again, it's, it's more simple than we've made it. And so what you do is it's called, it's digging with the Holy Spirit, just like Ezekiel was asked to dig into the wall. And then when he looked in there, he saw all the idols and stuff that were written. So, um, so we have to dig with the Holy Spirit. And a lot of us have become spiritually lazy, but the fire of God is increasing in the body where people are going to know and they have a hunger knowing there is more. So whenever we, we seek for the more of God and we just we lay it down before Him instead of running to the doctor. Uh, uh, we, we, we can go to doctors and that's great and God gave us doctors and God gave us um, medicines and things like that. But we have made doctors an idol over our problems in medication. And if you go to a doctor, they often will give you a worldly solution to a spiritual problem. So if the root is spiritual, um, then you have to combat it spiritually. And, you, and, and if, it, if it's a spiritual problem, that means there's a spiritual enemy behind it. And we cannot combat spiritual enemies um, in the natural, but we have to combat it spirit to spirit. And so we use the authority that Jesus gave us. And so it's simple. It's just saying, God, I come, I come before you today and I ask you to reveal to me the root of these issues in, in listening unloading on God. Because if we don't unload, we'll have a lot of noise in our mind. So we unload those things and present all of our cares to Him. And then we sit and we listen um, and He'll give us scriptures and He'll give us, um, sometimes, a lot of times people will go to deliverance ministries. It's not that we don't have authority ourselves or that people do not have their own authority, but that uh, people have been consecrated unto the Lord. And so God gives us people. We know the disciples had each other, right? Right. And so, um, so that's why people come. And I've had that asked, well, why do I need to go to a deliverance ministry? And we ask, well, is it working for you? Well, no. Well, sometimes <laughs> you need a friend. Sometimes you need a hand and the Holy Spirit will walk um, them through that. And that's how we do it in ministry. We do not give you a list to check off. Do you have this, this, and this? We don't give you a list to check off. We enter into prayer and we ask Holy Spirit to highlight what is hidden. You know, uh, I can attest to our friend Ron Till being the real deal, and yes. you being the real deal. Um, there is such a thing as authority. There is such a thing as principalities. And there is uh, levels of leadership uh, in the kingdom, but also in the kingdom of darkness. You know, um, people who are warriors consider everything a war, and I understand I'm, uh, I'm, I'm that way. But it's interesting that some of the, the terminology of justified, uh, that's a court term you know, declared not guilty, right? The accuser of the brethren. Well, he's not standing on a battlefield accusing me. He's before the Father uh, in the courts of heaven, some would say, accusing the, the brethren, right? Um, uh, there are levels of authority. Even the ancient Jews believe that when it comes to the army of the enemy. It looks more like a court system and, and a hierarchy of leadership 
uh, than it does a battlefield, even though there's also the battlefield as well. You know, I tell people this all the time, that, that when you look at me or, or folks, you are seeing us through the camera, you're not seeing us. You're seeing light reflected off of our skin or off of surfaces. This is the lowest form of, of uh, reality. The lowest form of perception is visible light. You're not seeing all the all the emails and messages of people trying to get in touch with me right now uh, uh, while I'm sitting here filming, and yet you see the results of it. Uh, and yet so many times, it's, it's just interesting. It's so easy for people to believe their cell phone works. Uh, you know, a, a function that people back in the day or, or, or even in, in uh, uh, the Old Testament times would call magic of mm -hmm. information, pictures and moving things coming in out of this phone you can't see, but you know it's there because you use it. You see the fruit. In the same way, uh, it's, it's spiritual warfare and authority. You may not be able to see the principalities, uh, but you can be sure that they are there. You know, Christy, uh, we were sitting at lunch the other day after uh, going to Kingdom's Gate, that den of warriors out there in Andrews, Texas, that all these people, you know, renowned people come through and to uh, with Kyle, Melissa Hooper, and incredible people there at Kingdom's Gate Apostolic Center in Andrews. Um, but my wife told you a story about this young Native American boy uh, that was adopted in, in, mm -hmm. into our part of the family and was having night terrors. And I was there that night. You know, I heard a blood-curling scream, but Christy saw what happened. Uh, the little boy who had been tormented, uh, he he walked into our room, and he's standing there. Mama, he thought that Christy was his mama. Wrong room. And she comes out, hey, sweetheart, let's get you to your mom. And he stops in the middle of the hallway and points and ah, screams, his blood-curling, terrifying scream, and he couldn't stop. His parents came, and they began to pray uh, with the child, and Christy began to pray too, and, and her thought was, well, I'll, I'll go get my husband, Bram, to, to pray for this child. And she, what did she say? Wait a minute. God has given me authority mm -hmm. as well. And in Jesus' name, I command this demonic spirit to no longer torment this boy and to get out of my house. Guess what? Immediately, uh, the boy started to stop screaming, and there was, he, was, he was free. As far as we know, that's never happened again. But that's a part of, of authority that, that the believer has. Uh, whether you realize it or not, you have to exercise that. And with all that said, every Monday night, you have a meeting in Andrews, Texas. Tell us about that. So the meeting on Mondays at 7 o'clock in Andrews is called Fan the Flame. And so I just remember um, actually getting invited to start teaching some, some classes there. But it all began by a visitation of an angel. And then after, and we were praying for the nation, and after that transpired, I said, Lord, what are you doing with this? And he, and he told me to fan in the flame, just like it says in 2 Timothy, when Paul was reminding Timothy to fan in the flame the gifts of God that we've been given. And so we take that time to fan the flames of the gifts of God, but also to equip and to train. Uh, because our goal there at that class is to see people fulfilling their destiny. We don't, we don't want people to stay where they are. We want people to know who Jesus is and encounter Jesus and through his word and through the revelation of the Holy Spirit. But we want to see them walking in the power that God, that, that it's there. So it, it, essentially igniting what God's already given to them or bringing to revelation what they have. You know, it sounds amazing. And it I love is. the name Fan the Flame. But you just so casually talked about a visitation of an angel. I'm hearing stories of people, uh, Muslims too, that Jesus is appearing to them in dreams right now mm -hmm. and outside of dreams. He's appearing to people. The enemy's not hiding anymore, uh, but people you know, don't wanna believe it or see it, but it's right there. I mean, even the world knows better, it seems, and the church does, the, the reality of Satan especially in the, in, the, in the people that I talk to in the movie industry and in the music industry. But he is a, Jesus is appearing. And so, uh, and I trust you anyway, but tell us about this visitation that led to this whole thing. 
So it was November um, of last year, and I was in Rio Dosa doing a women's retreat. And so we had a mighty move of God there. We actually had a cloud appear over and um, just and, and so many different supernatural things of the Lord there. But while I was there, I had a lot of people reaching out to me about what was happening in uh, the presidential election. And I didn't have time to focus on that because, I, you know, I was ministering. So... Um, I, I got home the next night and I asked the Lord, what are you saying? What are you saying about this election? What, what, what's your outlook on this? And so I, I fell asleep into what, um, and there is a difference between a dream and a night, and a night vision. And, and, and night visions are usually more vivid and real, um, um, but you know that you're, you're in a different realm. So it was, it was kind of like that. It was very clear, vivid. And so what had happened was a man had come at me to shoot me and another, um, what I think, may have been an angel pulled me out of the way and I and I woke up and I woke myself up and said I don't I don't want to be in that dream or night vision and I knew what it was and so I said um, Lord don't take me back into that right well I fell right back asleep into it so I was immediately where I left off so I knew I had protection and so I went to one area where there was a group of people and they were talking about the church and they were talking about God and what he was going to do um, and, and so I was listening to these conversations and this man um, he, he caught my attention because he had authority, like we're talking about authority. He had the authority and the presence of God all over him. He was about 11, 10 to 11 feet tall, um, and he had on a suit and glasses, um, a, bi a big black man. And I, walked, and I walked up to him, and I, and I could feel the presence of God. I could feel the fear of the Lord. I almost didn't want to speak to him. But he said, I have come from, with a message from the Lord, and the Lord is asking you, what are you going to do about it? Wow. And so um, I was like, okay, I know this is an angel. Well, then he, he walked off. His assignment was over. So I run after him. And I'm like, you're an angel. He's like, yes, I am. I'm like, what are you doing here? And I start probing him about, and he tells me that he is a territorial angel. And so then um, there was another angel, and they were communicating. And he shook his head at the angel I was talking to, saying it's not the time. So whatever that information is, I do pray the Lord will, when it's time, release it to me. So... Um, but he told me that, what am I going to do about it? Um, and give me an opportunity to uh, step in and to, and to pray. And I knew I had a word of knowledge that we have to enter into actual real prayer, um, pinpointed prayer. Well, the next day I wake up, I'm like, Lord, how am I going to do that? You know, what am I going to do? Well, I had a meeting with Ron that morning. And he actually was saying, hey, I need you to come in and I need you to start teaching on Monday. So the opportunity was presented the very next morning. Well, dreams, dreams are important. Yes, they are. You know, people may be tempted, well, it was just a dream, just a dream. You know what? Joseph was told by an angel to marry Mary in a dream. Joseph was told to take Mary and Jesus uh, to Egypt to escape Herod in a dream. Dreams, jo in the Old Testament, Joseph was given dreams. Um, uh, from pharaohs to kings mm -hmm. to prophets, dreams are important. You know, after our meeting the other day, you say, well, Brant, you're going to have dreams. Your dreams will be enhanced. And of course, dreams, I've had dreams and visions my whole life, um, and, and I've acted on them. But uh, just sure enough, last night, uh, yet again, something that you or Ron or Kyle said came to pass. And again, these people are real. You know, they're real people. It's not, oh, you know, you've seen that. You've seen that. These are real people who love a real Jesus, uh, who love a real Messiah, serve a real God. But the Lord uses dreams, folks. Many of you know what I'm talking about. You've had dreams. God has spoken to you in dreams. He's warned you in dreams. He's corrected you in dreams. Uh, he's given you a leading in dreams. And so pay attention to your dreams. And and again, now that you know, just from watching the news, we live in the days we read about. Uh, dreams and visions will increase. And sure enough, Cher, it's happening. Mm -hmm. You actually moved out to Andrews for the purpose of, of, uh, of, uh, of ministering to those people, right? Yes. So the Lord has a heart for West Texas. And so, and, and especially Andrews. What Andrews is, is a, is a hub for revival. And I'm not talking about an event or just a, a movement or a wave. I'm talking about a lifestyle and reviving is a change of heart. So Andrews has deep wells 
that um, have been being redug by people that have been strategically sent out there. So I, I resisted for a couple years, but when I moved there, everything lined up perfectly and um, the Lord did everything that he had prophesied he would do. And, and that is when I ran into Ron, as Ron was out there on the same mission as I was. And he's become a spiritual father to me during that time as well. But, um, and so I wanna, I wanna let people know that there are hubs all over. Andrews, Texas is one of them. So you will, we will see people from all over the world, I believe coming, coming there um, to see what, what the Lord is doing. But I know that he has set up these hubs in different places, especially um, in the Middle East. Like you said, God's showing up major oh, yeah. and to people there himself. Missionaries will get in there and sneak in there and they'll say, Jesus has already come. Yeah, He's already appeared. So uh, the, the Lord is on the move. And like you, like you said, uh, um, it's, it's knowing our authority and it's knowing where we're at. And, and that's the relationship with God that we have to get into that place where we're in relationship um, and that it's not just words written with ink, but it's words written on our heart, right? That's right. And we're coming out of that church age into the kingdom age, and that's the dominion age. And that's the place that we're, where we are going to see the book of Acts come back to life. But I believe that it's the former reign and the latter reign combined so that we'll have even a greater manifestation than they had then. But it's no... Um, it's no denying that the church in America has been um, spiritually dead or has had mixture. And when you read the book of Acts and you see that church, we, we're not seeing that right now. Um, we haven't been seeing that. But that shaking that started in 2020 that we were prophesying about in 2018, although none of us, most of us didn't know what it was going to look like. Um, we have entered into the time right now of the house and it's the father's house and that's us. And so our foot is in the door and we're learning about our authority and how to walk in dominion. And when you walk in dominion, you walk in that place where you're seated with Christ. Um, so where you're above. So not everything like you said is always a war because you're above it. And right. you're able to look right. where he sees in his perspective. Um, and, and it's a lot different whenever we, whenever we look at it from that angle, there's victory. There is, and one of the best ways, I mean, I, I got to speak in Andrews the other day, and, and you know, when you're flowing and the Lord's speaking through you, you're like, hey, wow, I've never heard that before. Right. That's, wow, you know, and, and one of the lessons that I've been learning, because I've always, I've always lived for the thrill of the fight, you know, on the front line, uh, but, but when you focus on the king and not the battle, then you have that perspective. Yes. You're able to see things with fresh eyes, and even got a call yesterday from an incredible brother, um, uh, the things that, that God is doing in his life. He's redeeming faster these days. He's doing things quicker these days, folks, if you notice. Even the New Agers say there's a new consciousness happening. There's a new awareness. There's, well, they're right, but they, they need to know where it's really coming from. Uh, the battle line between good and evil are, are being drawn and, and very clear now. And it's not always... Uh, your friends are not always the ones you thought were your friends. Your enemies are not always the ones you thought were your enemies. Uh, but with all that to say is the focus on the king instead of the battle. And, and your victory, I believe, is sure. And also focusing on the Lord. One hour of favor is better than a thousand hours of labor. I'm living that. You're living that. Yes. You're, very, you're a very educated woman. And yet you don't throw around all your degrees like so many do, you know, uh, because you're, you're tapped into this spiritual warfare, prophetic, uh, intercessory deliverance uh, vein. A lot of you are watching, you know, when I moved here in 2009, I heard of all the people from all over the world moving to West Texas, especially intercessors, especially those with prophetic gifts. Did you know that? That there's been so many words spoken over this region in West Texas. Mm -hmm. And so those of you who... Your pastors didn't know what to do with you because <laughs> maybe they didn't understand it. Uh, guess what? There's a place for you. There's a den of warriors uh, and, and right there in Andrews, Texas uh, at this event. Uh, of course, they, they meet uh, Monday nights and Sunday mornings, Kingdom's Gate, uh, Abbasog Center, but uh, your meetings every Monday night, that is a welcome uh, hub for all of you who 
Maybe you didn't understand why you couldn't get the prayer thing going in your church. Maybe you didn't understand why you were getting uh, opposition, maybe from the leadership. Uh, we don't want to touch about that. You know, I'll never forget doing a concert in Moore, Oklahoma. We don't want to talk about the enemy. Well, that's going to be your undoing because he's going to, he's going to defeat you. There's a place for you. Uh, you've been seeing the website the entire time. I will not keep silent. Would you like to look into the camera and just personally invite all of those people? They know all your, everything you're talking about. They've, been, they've never had a place before, and now they know where to go. This one. There you go. So uh, I just want to let you know that there is a place for you in the kingdom of God. And, and the reason that you have felt misplaced is because you're what um, the Lord has been speaking about. You're one of those wild ones. You're not conditioned, um, and, 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 and you might be rough around the edges, or you might have come out of a bad background, or... Um, come out of the occult or, or, or whatever, but the Lord is tugging at your heart right now. And some of you have already been in this place for a while in a wilderness season, in the time of the refinery's fire. And the Lord is saying that um, in, in this next season, and even within the next three months, that you are going to gain more clarity and understanding on where exactly He wants you to go. And, and He's going to bring people into your path um, he's going to bring divine connection. So pay attention um, and to when you have uh, that in your spirit, whenever you connect with somebody and you know that it's divine. But also pay attention to when you have a check in your spirit because not everybody is sent by God for your life. But you, you do belong and um, we need you because you're the remnant. You're the ones that God has called to rise up. You're the ones that he's called for this hour. You were created for this day and time. It's not by accident, um, anything that has happened to you. Nothing will be wasted. Uh, mighty deliverance ministers, those who work in their prophetic and, and healing and all the nine gifts of the spirit, um, those who are able to yield to the Holy Spirit and that he might manifest as he pleases. That, that's you. Um, that, that's, that's who you are. That's who God created you to be. And I know that even now that you feel that, that tug on your heart. But if you're, if you're the one, I, I see this, but if you're the one who has been backsliding and you know, you know that you're called by God, you know that the destiny that he has put um, into you, even as a child, the Lord is saying that all you have to do is turn around. And as soon as you turn around, he is right there waiting for you with open arms. He is not mad at you, but he is madly in love with you. So come back home today. Wonderfully said. Incredible ministry. Incredible Thank woman. Thank you so much. And your hubby is, is an amazing guy too. Can't wait to interview him. What a story. Folks, you've been invited. You've been told. So connect with Cher today and be blessed in all that you do. There is a place for you and there is a time for you. And that place is right where we told you, and the time is now. You know, our friend Big Pond, if, if, yes. not, if not now, then when? Uh, if not here, then where? If not you, then who, right? So those, those who have ears to hear, I trust that you've heard. Thank you for joining us for another great Word on the Street. And thank you again, Sheriff Butler. Thank you for having me. It's been you an bet. honor. And we'll talk to you next time. God bless you.